South Stack Lighthouse. South Stack Lighthouse earned itself a place in two books, Haunted Britain and South Stack, Anglesey's famous lighthouse, thanks to its spectral resident lighthouse keeper, Jack Jones. According to South Stack author Ian Jones, the lighthouse was a merry place, right up until the night of October 25, 1853, when one of the worst storms ever hit the coastline, where South Stack is situated. An incredible 200 ships were wrecked that night, including the famous Royal Charter. Jack hurried down to the lighthouse as the storm raged on that doomed evening. Just as he reached the bottom of the steps, where the local bridge crosses over to the island, he managed to cross the bridge, but only made it as far as the door of the lighthouse. He was in a dire condition, when he was found the next day and died two weeks later. Over 100 years later, his ghost is often heard knocking on the door of the lighthouse, in the dead of the night or frantically rapping at the windows, trying to get inside. After paying the lighthouse a visit, Ian Jones described the racket as astonishing. The TV show Most Haunted journeyed to the lighthouse, and got a little more than even they bargained for when an object resembling a tiny horseshoe, was flung at then host at Fielding as she walked toward an outbuilding on the island. When Dave Stack visited the island, he was skeptical at first but became a believer, when he spotted someone staring at him through a window. Chasing after the figure yielded no answers, as it flung itself over the cliff, and disappeared into the sea. Pensacola Lighthouse The Pensacola Lighthouse stands on a tropical beach with a breathtaking view, but its history includes a sinister story. Michaela P. Nalber married the man of her dreams, Jeremiah Ingraham, and merrily moved into the lighthouse, not long after it was completed in 1826. There seemed like a wonderful union, but strangely, the couple's marriage turned sour almost overnight. Its sudden turbulence came to a head when Michaela stabbed her husband to death, one evening in 1840 for seemingly no reason. She was never convicted for the murder due to lack of evidence, and lived out the rest of her days in the lighthouse, until she died in 1855. Even in the afterlife, it seems that Michaela's violent streak lives on. Visitors have reported objects being thrown at them, while they walked through the living area, where Michaela and her unlucky husband stayed and large blood stains were still visible on the floor, before the lighthouse was renovated. A local resident stated that he had once tried to wash the blood off, but it would just reappear time and time again. Chillingly, some visitors have heard breathing behind them, and sensed a presence following them while taking the staircase to the lighthouse tower. Point Lookout Lighthouse the Point Lookout Lighthouse, built in 1830, is known as one of the most haunted places in Maryland. For more than 130 years, the lighthouse served the surrounding community and ships until it was decommissioned in 1981, after which several reports of supernatural activity began popping up. In response to these reports, parapsychologist Dr. Hans Holzer and a team of other experts descended on the Point Lookout Lighthouse and managed to record 24 different voices during their investigation. The voices can be heard singing, talking, and even swearing. A voice saying fire if they get too close to you, can be clearly heard in their recordings, thought to be related to the Confederate soldiers that, were held prisoner on the island. Holzer also believed that, he captured the voice of the first lighthouse keeper at Point Lookout, and Davis who fondly spoke of my home somewhere on the staircase. A sighting of Ann Davis dressed in a white top and blue skirt was also reported. When a stinking smell emanated from a room inside the lighthouse, Holzer was convinced that it was the spirits of tormented souls who couldn't leave. Soon after he uttered this statement, the horrible smell dissipated. has at a head lighthouse. Tragic female figures and flowing pale dresses have been haunting hundreds of locations around the world for centuries, and lighthouses are among them. 
has had a head is allegedly haunted by the ghost of a mother, whose baby daughter fell to her death from the cliff upon which it stands. The apparition has been dubbed the Grey Lady, as she has been reported to wear a long, grey skirt while floating around the attic of the lighthouse, which has been renovated into a guest house. Visitors have reported flickering lights when no one else was in the lighthouse, doors that seemingly lock themselves, and objects that disappear only to reappear in a different room. A worker who was tasked with replacing a broken window, in the attic received the fright of his life, when he saw the grey lady just floating around while he was working. Naturally, he took to his heels. Returning the next day to find the shards of glass from the broken window swept up, and sitting neatly in a pile in the attic. The spookiest case involves a photographer named Steve Terrell, who was looking for a ghostly shot of the lighthouse, when he noticed a transparent figure looking at him from inside the attic. He thought it was only his imagination, since he and a friend were the only ones staying at the lighthouse, at the time, but he soon realized that, may not have been true when he discovered the guest book of the lighthouse in his room. The book was opened to a page, where a previous visitor's tale of a ghostly encounter in the lighthouse was recorded. New London Ledge Lighthouse The U.S. Coast Guard began taking shifts at the New London Ledge Lighthouse in 1939. Not long after, spooky things started happening there. Legend has it that a lighthouse keeper by the name of Ernie, jumped from the roof of the lighthouse, to the ocean below, where his body never resurfaced. Many people don't believe that, he killed himself, but the official story is that, he cut his own throat with a fishing knife. But Ernie allegedly refused to leave the lighthouse. His spirit frightened and annoyed the crew, from the Coast Guard by making loud knocking sounds at night pulling the bedding off of them, while they were sleeping, and turning the television set on and off. Some of the keepers didn't even wait, until daylight to get away from the lighthouse, calling the mainland and asking to be fetched from the place immediately. After the lighthouse was automated in 1987, several reports filtered in from boat crews that, a figure at the lighthouse had signaled to them or tried to lure them to the dock. However, Whenever these reports were investigated, not a living soul was found in the lighthouse.